Let's bring in South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator, welcome. Thanks for being here. You, of course, have traveled to Afghanistan countless times, both as a senator uh, on the Armed Services Committee over the years, but also you served there. After two decades, how has the Taliban yeah. managed in this <clears throat> amount of time to retake Afghanistan? Just a little over a week. It is stunning. Yeah, well, uh, for about three years, we had a uh, formula that worked. A small American contingent of soldiers and airmen providing close air support to the Taliban, intel to the, um, excuse me, to the Afghan security forces, uh, and medical evacuation capability. That gave the edge to the Afghan security forces. So what happened is we changed the game. Joe Biden is responsible for this, not Donald Trump. Donald Trump had a conditions-based withdrawal. The military told President Biden, if you pull the plug on Afghanistan, it's just a matter of time and the Taliban take over in whole or part. Nobody thought it would be 10 days, but for three years we had a formula where we would have a small footprint of Americans helping the Afghan security forces. We changed the game, the country collapsed, and here's what Biden needs to tell the country. How much are we at risk from the takeover by the Taliban of Afghanistan? I would tell President Biden to let every country know that if you recognize the Taliban, you do so at your own peril because they're a terrorist organization. And Mr. President, you have a moral obligation to establish safe corridors so that the 60,000 Afghans who helped us can get out of the country safely. And if that requires more American military involvement, do it. It is a stain on our honor to leave these people behind. But all this was avoidable, avoidable. Joe Biden chose poorly. If that is the case, Senator, do you, do you anticipate that there will be a congressional investigation into that decision? Yeah, I hope so. But here's what I want people to know. If you served in Afghanistan, you should be proud of what you did for our country and the Afghan people. On your watch, the Taliban was held at bay, al-Qaeda was on the run, and women had a better life. Joe Biden chose to remove all the forces, not Donald Trump. He made a decision, and now the threat to the homeland is through the roof. Uh, tens of thousands of people who helped us are going to be left behind to be abused, and we're weaker throughout the world, a trifecta of catastrophe for the United States. The person to blame here is the commander in chief who rejected sound military advice. Joe Biden has been incompetent most of his political life when it comes to foreign policy. As commander in chief, he is now dangerous. Our country is more at threat today than we were last week because President Biden turned down sound military advice and the same people in charge of Afghanistan are in charge of our border. When will we realize that they don't know what they're doing? A stark reminder of just how wrong he has gotten this was Joe Biden in his own words back in July. Senator, listen. Yeah. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese Army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of an embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. That, of course, we now know had to happen, and now we've got chaos yeah, at the yeah. Kabul airport there. It's the only way out, Senator, as you know. And now the president has informed us that he is sending in a 1,000 additional troops to try to safeguard the airport there. He is pointing fingers at Donald Trump, as you just mentioned, uh, as we anticipate his remarks yeah. a short time from now. The Wall Street Journal this morning talking about the Afghan surrender on the part of Joe Biden. The president tries to duck responsibility in a calamitous withdrawal. Note that Biden is more critical, they say, of his predecessor than he is of the Taliban. The president has spent seven yeah. months ostentatiously overturning one Trump policy after another <clears throat> on foreign and domestic policy, yet he now claims Afghanistan policy is the one he could not do anything about. That is a point well taken in this moment, Senator. Yeah, let me, let me tell you, let's dive a little bit deeper. Uh, Biden mentioned Vietnam. Did anybody ever believe that the North Vietnamese would plot to attack the United States if we lost in Vietnam. When you hear the word Taliban, you need to think of Al-Qaeda and 9-11. The President Biden doesn't understand this war. Radical Islam is a threat to humanity. They will attack us if we don't fight back and contain them over there. You got several choices here. Fight them in their backyard or our backyard. The fight is coming back to our backyard because we abandoned Afghanistan. You do it with partners or by yourself. We've abandoned the Afghan people. We've lost a good partner. The bottom line here is that President Biden doesn't understand, in my view, the threats to the United States from leaving 
uh, Afghanistan. Another 9-11 is far more likely today than it was a week ago. And I, I want to stress this. When you look to blame people, our military told President Biden, if we remove all of our forces, the Taliban will take the country back over and the threat that our homeland will, will get much greater in a very short period of time. And the one thing that breaks my heart as much as anything else is that we're leaving tens of thousands of people behind to be abused and murdered by the Taliban who took a risk to help the United States. We're weaker all over the world because of this. And the person to blame is not Donald Trump. He had a condition space withdrawal. It is Joe Biden who chose his military advice over that of the professional military. General Biden has been a disaster in Iraq. He was a disaster in Afghanistan. He's a disaster at the border. All I can tell you is that the men and women who fought for decades in Afghanistan honorably served our country, and now all has been lost because Joe Biden made a very bad decision against sound military advice. And when it comes to Afghanistan, the worst is yet to come. And after mounting criticism over the weekend of his vacation uh, at Camp David, the president, this is a live scene here, uh, is arriving back in D.C., where just a short time from now, he is set to address the nation. Uh, Senator Graham, uh, as you heard from Jennifer Griffin at the top of the hour there reporting, uh, she's got credible sources reporting that the Taliban yeah. is going door to door yeah. right now, looking yeah. for anyone who fought alongside uh, us while we were over there. Here's the president live returning to Washington, D.C. Uh, Senator, uh, you heard Joey Jones last hour. Uh, he fought in Afghanistan, lost his legs. Um, he said his primary yeah. concern right now is how do we ensure the safety of those that are sent yes. over there to do their jobs? How are we to know that they yeah. will be allowed to, enabled to do their jobs uh, Joey Jones questioning, obviously, the yeah. leadership of this president. Do you share in that yeah. concern? Yeah, number one, unless we establish safe corridors enforced by military force, uh, combat operations, tens of thousands of people are going to be slaughtered. How do you save them? You tell the Taliban, we're going to create safe passage to the airport throughout Kabul, and if you interfere with the efforts to get our people out who helped us, we will go to war with you. I don't care if you have to send the 82nd Airborne to do this. It is a point of honor to America. And I would say this, if you ask our military, anybody willing to go back to Afghanistan to help get those out that fought with us, you would have a million hands raised. So the bottom line is that we can save these people, but we got to change our policy. The bottom line is that we can contain the threat the Taliban face if we stand uh, present to us, if we tell the world, don't legitimize this regime. I want President Biden to tell Pakistan and China that if you recognize the Taliban, you're recognizing a terrorist organization with blood on their hands regarding Americans, and we will hold you accountable. This is a time for presidential leadership, but the problem with President Biden is he doesn't understand the nature of the war. He's like a deer in the headlights, and he's unable to adjust. The worst thing in a time of crisis is to have a commander in chief who can't change their mind. As much as criticism you want to levy against President Trump, he made a decision in Syria to withdraw, and he changed his mind when he saw what was going to happen. He had a condition space withdrawal in Afghanistan. I'm convinced that President Trump would not have let this happen. And our military told President Biden, if you do what you're talking about doing, you're going to have chaos on your hands. And they were right, and President Biden was wrong. Safe quarters need to be established right now to avoid thousands of people from being slaughtered who helped us. And if we don't help these people now, who will help us in the future? Senator, it is, it is hard to believe these images that we're looking at as you have been speaking of, of these Afghan civilians clinging yeah. to U.S. Air Force planes on takeoff, some of them holding on, dropping to their certain death, knowing they were yeah. going to drop yeah. to their certain death. Uh, According to Jennifer Griffin's reporting, top of the hour, you also just heard her say that as of now, only a few hundred people have been evacuated from yeah. Kabul on U.S. flights. Senator, right. that seems shocking to me. What's, what is happening? Well, well, clearly we don't have enough airplanes in the system to get people out. We got to create safe passage corridors or we're going to leave thousands of people behind. This is all avoidable. We need to tell the Taliban, uh, we're going to get the people out who helped us, and if you want to fight, you'll get one and you will lose it. If we don't change policy, we're going to leave tens of thousands of people behind to be abused or killed, and this is all avoidable. President Biden needs to tell the Taliban, 
we're going to get these people out. We're going to use whatever force necessary to get them out. You can still change things, President Biden. Please do. If you don't, you're sending thousands of people to a certain death who uh, stepped up to help America. We owe it to these people. We owe it to our honor as a nation. Who's going to help us in the future? Uh, this is a moment of, uh, uh, of decision making for President Biden. Are you going to uphold America's honor? Or are you going to walk away and allow tens of thousands of people to be slaughtered? It's up to you, Mr. President, not Trump, not Lindsey Graham, you. What the hell are you going to do? How about listening to sound military advice for once in your life? That's why I ask you about a potential congressional investigation, whether or not you're going to dig in to learn more about how that decision, decision was made. We also know that uh, U.S., uh, the first uh, female vice president, um, Kamala Harris, was said, and she confirmed herself, she was the last one in the room before he announced that decision to make this full withdrawal. Where is she on this? I haven't seen a statement from her, and I certainly haven't seen her speaking out about the terror that those women and girls are facing in that country. And I think this is important to read off to you. Uh, furthermore, from Jennifer Griffin's reporting, our national security correspondent, the Taliban, she has been told, have all the records of those who serve from the KKA AFG special forces. They are starting to go to the houses yeah. of these Afghan senators to begin seeking retribution. Sheer terror, yeah. she is reporting, on the ground in Kabul. This is what she's being told yeah. at this hour. It is just getting worse, Senator. Well, basically, President Biden is like a deer in the headlights when it comes to Afghanistan. He made a very poor decision. He rejected sound military advice. He openly bragged about, I'm not going to let the military keep me in uh, keep me involved in Afghanistan it's time to get out mm -hmm. he's giving America a false choice he's gonna speak in a couple hours and he's gonna mislead you the choice was never stay and have a big war or leave the choice was to maintain a strategy that was working mm -hmm. keep the Taliban at bay have leverage to get a peace deal we've lost all leverage but here's what I hope he'll do I hope he'll bleed the Taliban dry People in Afghanistan hate the Taliban. There will be armed resistance forming. I hope we will help those who are willing to fight back. I hope we will make the Taliban's life miserable. They're not the legitimate government of the Afghan people, and any country who recognizes them should do so at their own peril. So I'm looking for leadership from President Biden at a time it will matter. I don't care about a congressional investigation. Mr. President, you have a chance in the next 48 hours to establish safe corridors to get thousands of people out of Afghanistan who will be killed if you don't exercise some leadership here. I know that General Keene was already talking about backlash he's hearing from our allies, including Britain and Germany, um, some of them of which wanted to stay. He said there's going to be significant consequences over the coming years. None of them, he said, yeah. are good. He also mentioned their recruiting is going to go up as a result of this. Senator, appreciate your time this afternoon as we await the president's Thank remarks. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.